Hey there, I'm David Amos, and if you've been following along with my channel, you know that I'm really into graph theory, like kind of obsessed with it. Well, I wanted to share with you one of my favorite books about graph theory, and really one of my favorite books about mathematics in general. That book is An Introduction to Graph Theory by Richard Trudeau. So what is this book about? I mean, it's an introduction to graph theory, so it's, it's about graph theory. But it's a lot more than that. It's really kind of an introduction to pure mathematics for people who've never been exposed to it before. And it does a really fantastic job. Even then, it's really not just for the mathematically unexposed. In fact, the author talks about three readers he had in mind when he was writing the book. I have three types of readers in mind. First, and closest to my heart, the mathematically traumatized. And it's kind of interesting that he uses the word trauma because this book was written in the 1970s. So even then, uh, people, educators, uh, mathematicians were aware of the trauma that math can cause people that they were experiencing in math class in school. So that this book is targeted first and foremost to people who have had that kind of experience tells you a lot about what the author has in mind, how he's going to approach this. And uh, we'll talk about that later when we talk about some of the things that I really like about the book. The second reader that he mentions it, that uh, he has in mind is the mathematical hobbyist. He says this, I think graph theory makes for marvelous recreational mathematics. It is intuitively accessible and rich in unsolved problems. And I would agree with that assessment. As an undergraduate, when I took my first graph theory class, I was really kind of uh, shocked at how approachable a lot of the problems felt. Uh, it was very easy to sort of get a concrete understanding of some things. You could draw a little picture and uh, and start to, to play with it. Finally, the third reader that he mentions is the serious student of mathematics. This is a really tall order. Uh, when I read this recently, now having made a bit of a career for the past couple of years as a writer, uh, this was kind of shocking to me. This is a very wide range of readers, and it's, it's difficult as a writer to speak to uh, that general of an audience. And I think that Richard Trudeau does a marvelous job of achieving that goal in, in this book. So if you fall into any of those three categories, uh, I really do think that you'll enjoy this book. Uh, let's, I guess, take a quick look at some of the things that the book uh, talks about. And, uh, and then I'll tell you some of my final thoughts about the book and where you can purchase it. The book starts with a uh, introduction to pure mathematics, kind of an explanation of what pure mathematics is um, and why you might want to study pure mathematics. And it gives kind of an interesting analogy to a, a game uh, or to games. And uh, there's a really uh, nice quote in here that, uh, that describes pure mathematics as basically a box of games, and at last count it contained more than 80 of them. Uh, I believe referencing uh, 80 different sub-disciplines within mathematics. Um, he, he gives an analogy to chess and uh, kind of talks about how uh, you have this game of chess, it has some objects, the, the game board and the game pieces, and, uh, and some rules for the game that you have to follow but the board and the pieces are kind of non-essential. You could play chess with something totally different. You don't need a chess board and you don't need chess pieces. Uh, as long as you have something you could consistently apply the rules of chess to, you could play chess. This is kind of true of, of pure mathematics. For example, in geometry, you, you think of kind of uh, the standard school geometry as dealing with things like points, lines, and planes. And to a large extent, uh, geometry is not about points, lines, and planes. It's about things that meet certain definitions and uh, and things that we assume about them, and then what we can do with that afterwards uh, through the use of reason. So that's a, kind of a neat analogy, and to some extent, doing pure mathematics does kind of feel like a game. Uh, it's a game that happens to have a lot of uh, very important real-world applications but uh, it does sometimes feel like a game, nonetheless. After his discussion of uh, pure mathematics, uh, he gets into uh, an introduction to graphs and talks about 
uh, some different uh, types of graphs, some common types of graphs. He also gets into a brief introduction to set theory and the famous uh, Russell Zermelo par paradox, uh, which I actually have a video about. Uh, I'll put the link to that uh, down in the description. And uh, some kind of basic problems concerning graphs, uh, things like a graph isomorphism, which is a way to distinguish whether or not two graphs are the same graph, um, how you can recognize isomorphic graphs, and a few other topics on kind of just uh, basic the basics around uh, graphs. After the introduction to graphs, he moves on to a chapter about planar graphs, which are graphs that can be drawn, say, like on a sheet of paper, in such a way that uh, the edges never cross each other. There's a chapter on Euler's formula, uh, which is a famous formula about graphs. It's, uh, it relates the number of vertices, faces, and edges uh, in a graph in a really kind of surprising uh, way the first time you, you see it. After that, he talks about platonic graphs, which are graphs related to the five platonic solids. That's a really fun uh, chapter. There's a chapter on graph coloring, which is a very famous problem in uh, graph theory and in mathematics in general. He gives a proof of something called the five color theorem and uh, mentions what at the time was just a conjecture called the four color theorem. And by the time that uh, the second or third edition, which uh, I'm not sure which one this is, but uh, uh, by the time that second or third edition had been published, that proof had actually been, uh, pr that, uh, sorry, that conjecture had actually been proven. And uh, I'll, I'll do another video. I've got a great book that talks about that uh, four color theorem uh, in detail and uh, gives a really great breakdown of, of how that works and some of the consequences and why it was important to mathematics in general. Then there's a chapter on the genus of a graph, which uh, relates graph theory to its, I don't know if you want to call it a sister discipline, but uh, very related topology, which we've already, already mentioned. Uh, in a lot of ways, graph theory is kind of the first example of topology. There's a big connection between those, those two disciplines and the genus of a graph gets into and explores some of that connection between graph theory and topology. Finally, the last chapter talks about uh, what's called Euler walks and Hamilton walks. And this goes back actually to uh, the beginnings of graph theory when uh, Leonard Euler solved the uh, Seven Bridges of Konigsberg problem. I've got a video on that as well. And I use that problem to kick off uh, my video series on doing graph theory with Python. So uh, I thought it was kind of interesting that uh, we kind of approach things in a different order. Um, I don't know, reverse order is not the right word, but the, the topic that he saves for the last chapter is something that I decided to start my discussion of graph theory on. So that was kind of an interesting uh, difference there. But uh, it covers a, a wide range of topics in graph theory. If you read this book, you will have a good grasp of the kinds of things that graph theorists study and uh, some of the approaches that they take, the te techniques that they use, and how they tend to think about problems. So I want to talk about uh, some of the things that I really like about this book and why I consider it even one of my favorite math books of all time. And it really, I think, boils down to uh, about four things. So the first is that the book is extremely approachable. Like I said, he wrote this in with a very general, very wide audience in mind, and uh, he really pulls it off. Uh, it's very, very gentle on the reader without sacrificing a lot of depth, which again, as a, as a writer, uh, when I see that, I it's, it's just really amazing to see how well he's able to, uh, to pull that off. So the second thing that I really like about the book is that it's easy to consume. The chapters are relatively short. You can read most of them in probably 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, if you don't do the exercises, the exercises might take you a little bit more time than that, but uh, just reading the chapters is not a huge uh, commitment. And once you've read the book two or three times, you can kind of pick and choose the chapters at will. And to this day, uh, I still will occasionally just pick it up Kind of flip to a random chapter or something that is on my mind sounds interesting and uh, read that chapter and just uh, uh, re-engage re with uh, Trudeau's uh, 
exposition and his thoughts on a particular topic in, in graph theory. The third reason that I really like the book is that it does include a number of exercises. And uh, that, you know, if, if you pick up any mathematics textbook, there's going to be lots of exercises in it. But a lot of layman's books don't have exercises. And this book is kind of um, teetering on the edge between being a layman's book and a mathematics textbook. The exercises, though, are approachable, even to folks that uh, don't have the, the pure mathematical background or haven't taken lots of advanced classes in mathematics. And I really, really like that he doesn't uh, give you any indication of how challenging a an exercise might be because you kind of go into it blindly and You might be surprised some of the things that you're able to solve just by reading about the different techniques that are used in the book and On top of that, it's it gives you a taste of what mathematical research uh, kind of is which is really neat um, You don't necessarily always know how difficult a research problem is going to be uh, you don't know if, uh, if you even have the skills or the techniques uh, ready at, at your hand to, to solve a problem. And the act of just thinking about a problem can often teach you things uh, about yourself, about, uh, about mathematics, you can learn uh, new things, you can invent new techniques. So just, just engaging with an exercise, even if you, you don't solve it uh, as quickly as you might hope, uh, or maybe even never solve it. Um, that act of engaging with it is going to teach you something uh, about mathematics and about doing mathematics. Finally, the fourth reason that I really like the book is that it just does a really wonderful job of illustrating the wonder and excitement that doing mathematics uh, entails and makes that approachable to a wide uh, audience. So those are the four reasons I like the book. Again, it is an introduction to graph theory by Richard Trudeau. Uh, if, if you've read it, I would love to hear what you think about it. Uh, did you enjoy it? Did you not like it? Uh, let me know down in, in the comments. Uh, if you have not read it, like I said, it's one of my favorite math books uh, of all time. I, I highly recommend uh, you get it. If you've seen some of my other content, you enjoy graph theory and the things that uh, I've talked about on my channel, then I think you'll really enjoy uh, this book. So I'll drop a link to uh, to the purchase the book on Amazon down in the description. It is an affiliate link, so I will earn a little bit uh, of small commission from it if you do end up purchasing it. Uh, it just goes to um, help me uh, keep running this channel and uh, provide uh, new and hopefully interesting content for all of you folks out there uh, listening and, and watching. So thanks again. Uh, I'm David Amos. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week, and I will see you soon in the next video. Oh yeah, one last thing before you go. Somewhere here on the screen is a link to a playlist containing all of my Graph Theory with Python videos, and somewhere else on here is a video that YouTube thinks you'll like. And finally, uh, you can click on the little circle uh, somewhere again here on the screen, and uh, subscribe to my channel if you'd like to. Thanks a lot. See you later.